This week on Supercars Talk, Red Bull Racing gets a new logo, Fabian Coulthard signs up for the team he's always wanted to drive for, Jack Smith has finally been confirmed at Brad Jones Racing, and I wear a red shirt to try and cover up the sunburn I got on the weekend. The big news of the week, Red Bull have got a new logo. Uh, My version of it is up there. Basically, all they've done is stick Ampol over where they had Holden. So, big news there. Um, Probably the actual big news of the week. Uh, No, not Fabian Coulthard getting confirmed at Techno Team Sydney. Um... Interesting that they chose a New Zealander uh, when Lee Holdsworth's available and uh, he's a Sydney Cider or Caruso. Um, Maybe those two guys knocked back the drive. Um, Local Legends, I assume, has stepped up to pay Fabian a, um, you know, a wage. Uh, Because I imagine that Alex Davison probably wasn't doing it for much money last year. Um, And I would have thought... Fabian would want to get paid considering he was offered the um, DJR co-drive um, in the endurance race uh, and I'd imagine that you'd get paid for that co-drive uh, so I'd imagine to do a full season's worth of work you'd want to get paid for that. Uh, a little bit of good news I suppose though for that team uh, Jeff Slater is back as the team manager for those who don't know Jeff uh, he was involved I think it was from about 2010 to 2016 with the team um, so basically in the days when it was actually competitive um, Shane Van Gisbergen did actually come second in the championship there and Will Davison did win Bathurst with that team uh, plus they won the 12 hours 12 out Bathurst the same year that they won uh, the proper Bathurst. Uh, he's been off in the United States for a few years working with Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing. Uh, so that that is some good news for the team. Now, the actual big news uh, that I suppose actually was news because there's been a couple of other announcements that uh, we need to go through this week. Uh, but the actual big news for the week is... Tim Slade has been confirmed at the Blanchard Racing Team. Um, James Rosenberg was mentioned uh, in the releases, and it seems that Phil Monday is still involved in that to uh, an extent. Uh, So that's a little bit of money coming from somewhere. Uh, Yeah, it's great news for Sladey. He, he's not a bad driver, uh, and for all those people who are bagging him, really, he did about the same as what Fabian did at Brad Jones Racing. So, you know, he, is, as far as I'm concerned, he's on about the same level as Fabian. They're not going to win the championship, but he's not going to do a bad job. Uh, you know, I, guys like Fabian and Lee Holdsworth and that, their names have been, you know, bandied around a bit. Um as far as I'm concerned, they're all probably on a similar level. Just unfortunate, Slade never really got a run in a top-line car. Um, the big thing for me was, though, the last few years, I've reckoned that Cool Drive car looked really cool. Uh, and I'm actually a little bit underwhelmed. Uh, probably my expectations were really high for that uh, Cool Drive livery on a Mustang because, to be honest... I, even being, I suppose, a Holden man. Um, Yeah, the the ZB just... As as much as you want to call the Mustang a mutant stang and things like that, um, the Mustang just looks heaps cooler than what the ZB could ever dream of looking like. Uh, So I was really excited. I thought this car was going to look amazing. Um, And it looks um, pretty... Yeah, I... I, I'm not excited by it, so there, I've said it. Other announcements for the week. Uh, Dave Reynolds has split from Erebus. Brody Kostecki has been announced as his replacement. Uh, 
no surprises there. The biggest surprise was that Brody was wearing a plain Erebus uh, shirt in the announcement, uh, probably because the Penrite money has gone with Dave to Kelly Racing. Um, just said that quietly because it hasn't been announced yet, but we all know what's happening. Interestingly for Dave, uh, he's going to be a pit lane reporter for the... Um, what. What are those little things called? Um, the Australian Racing Group, but the uh, it's just slipped my mind. The um, I was going to say the Toka Two Leaders, uh, whatever you call those uh, little shit boxes that um, yeah, apparently they're taking over the world. Um, I yeah, I surprised Dave Reynolds as pit reporter. Um, Lex Kelly would be a better replacement there. Um, and other confirmations this week. Uh, Jack Smith has been confirmed at Brad Jones Racing. I I thought that had already happened. So there was no shock at all there. Um, and Jake Kostecki and Zane Goddard have been confirmed at Matt Stone Racing. Unit and NTI will be the sponsors. I can't remember who gets which one. Uh, unfortunately for Gary Jacobson, he is the odd man out. Uh, but once again, uh, no surprises there. As soon as they couldn't get a third license, that was the way it was always going to happen. And even if they had got their hands on a third license, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if Gary would have been there for another season anyway. There is talk that Super 2 could make the jump to Gen 3 cars at the same time as what the main series does. Uh, the biggest one they're saying is because realistically, you're going to spend as much on you know a current Mustang or ZB Commodore as what you will on Gen 3 car. And then everyone gets to run the same thing and it'll be easier for the Super 2 guys to do wild cards. Uh, could see bigger fields at Bathurst because at the moment it's a pain in the ass. It saves all the Super 2 guys, you know, going and buying new equipment to remain competitive. It, you know, essentially if they're going to buy new equipment, well, may as well buy the um, newest generation cars. The only thing I would say with this is though, if you wanted to continue running a Gen 2 car into next year in super two you can do that but you know maybe you have to have 50 kilos of ballast or 100 kilos of ballast or something like that just so there is a bit of a division there uh but because i'm not sure if the new cars are actually going to end up faster because of the engines and things like that uh but to me i i think this is a great idea i just don't want to see every Super 2 team have to go and buy new equipment if they don't want to, that maybe we can phase it in somehow, but make sure that the Gen 3 cars, there, there is a reason for the guys to step up, but yeah, they don't have to if they don't want to. A bit like when the um, Car of the Futures and the Project Blueprints did run together for, I think it might have even been two years, to allow the guys to step up. Uh, and it, it was funny because they all said originally, oh, it's going to cost too much. Um, and I think after about three months, basically everyone but the Egglestons were running the uh, new generation cars because all of a sudden they weren't competitive uh, unless you were Paul, Drum D Paul Dumbrell in a uh, old car and somehow magically he was still somewhat competitive. And the final news story for this week and which will be the final news story for the year, uh, the race formats for next year have been announced. Now, the calendar is still in draft uh, phase, so this could change. I think the big one is probably the Australian Grand Prix. Uh, that's probably the biggest question mark, whether that actually goes ahead or not, and depending on which stories you read and who you talk to, uh, some people are saying 100% it is on, and other people are saying 0% chance the Australian Grand Prix will be happening next year. So um, they have booked Sandown for the weekend and whether Sandown still has the same formats as what's planned at the Grand Prix, uh, I guess we'll find that out in March, won't we? Uh, so the Grand Prix is um, probably the odd one in the pile. Uh, four by 100 kilometer races on that one. Then we have... Uh, Bathurst, 
Townsville and Gold Coast. Uh, that is the the mini Bathurst round one. Uh, they all get two by 250 kilometer races. The 1000 in October, that stays as a single 1000 race. Now, this is where things change up a little bit. All of the other rounds will be sprint rounds. Uh, they will all get three by 100 and something kilometer races. They all vary between 110 and 125 kilometers. There is a couple of differences in them other than just the kilometers. The Winton and Darwin rounds will run on the super soft tire. So um, they're low degradation tracks and then we put the super soft on, which that is great. Uh, but, you know, maybe it would have been fun putting it on at Sydney Motorsport Park and actually watching some degradation because you, you're going to end up with similar racing there, I suppose, because the super soft is still not going to um, degrade there. So it will be similar to having the soft tire anywhere else, I suppose. At least we are going to see the super soft and then maybe hopefully we get to see it in more places the year after. Um, there is going to be a bit of a tweak with some of the qualifying sessions as well at Simmons Plains and Wanneroo. They are going to have a, they're calling it a split qualifying session. Uh, so instead of having the knockout thing from this year, I think, um, what they're going to do is you send out one car from each team in two different sessions. So you only end up with 12 cars on the track at a time because they are really limited with space, these two tracks. So you, you know, probably in the first session you send out your slower driver. Um, and in the second session you send out your faster driver because uh, we can only assume that the second session will be slightly quicker. Uh, just because of more rubber down on the track. Uh, so that, and then it would be, you know, whoever's fastest out of the two sessions starts on pole, etc. Um, yeah, that, that's probably the big things. I don't know why we can't just have, say, three by 120 kilometer races at all of the tracks. Why, you know, Simmons and Wanneroo, 110 kilometers. Taylor Men's 115, Darwin's 110, Sydney Motorsport Park's 125, Pukekohe is 115. Um, not not sure, you know, it would be would be simple if we just said, you know, they're all going to be 120 k's. Uh, but you know, supercars likes to confuse things. Uh, so it looks like there's about 15 different race formats over 12 rounds for the year. Uh, but at, at least. You've either got your 2x250, your 3 by 100 and something, the Grand Prix kind of doing its own thing, and then we have Bathurst. Uh, I'm disappointed there is only one uh, endurance race again. It would have been nice to have a 500 at Sandown, or if we had to have a 500 at uh, Tail and Bend, at, at least have a 500 maybe had a proper enduro uh, at the Gold Coast to finish off the season. Uh, on that, though, I am pumped that the Gold Coast is still there, and it will be interesting, uh, you know, having two 250k races, because they will be, like what we used to see at Adelaide, they will be a bit of a marathon for a single driver. So that's it from me for the uh, interesting 2020 that we've had. Uh, at, at least we got to see some proper racing during the year. Uh, a lot of other categories haven't been as lucky as what we have been in supercars land. Uh, I'm going to take a couple of week break over Christmas uh, to do all of the festivities and generally the new cycle is pretty quiet. I will be back in the new year. Hopefully, I'll have some time to do a couple of little special episodes that I've been planning to do for quite a while. Um, and yeah, those last few remaining seats, um, I'm sure they'll be announced quickly into the new year because uh, now that Dave Reynolds is a free agent, he's uh, he can go and start talking to teams about what seats are available. Not sure if I believe that story, but you know... Some people might believe that he hasn't got anything organised for next year yet. Uh, so, 
I hope you've had a great year. Uh, hopefully you uh, come back and view some more videos next year. Um, down in the comments, uh, you know, if you'd like to see anything or if you've got any questions for me in the new year. But uh, until then, I'm still Dave and I'll catch you later.